There seems to be no sphere of life that requires more attention than the mountain of family. In fact, I've spoken to many people who feel that this is the most important of all other mountains because everything and everyone flows out of family. You know, they say if we can just get families to be healthy and all right, then society will also come into line. Now, although this claim holds some merit, the reality is that a healthy family cannot be produced unless some of the other areas of society, some of the other mountains are healed as well, because all the mountains are interconnected. Family is not an isolated area of life that can be easily pursued independently of the overall seven mountain mandate of bringing solutions to all the mountains. Now, let me briefly explain the overlapping family affecting dynamics from the other six mountains of society so you see what I'm talking about. In religion, or mountain of worship or religion, healthy churches are one of the most important aspects of bringing stability and ministry to hurting families. Even if you were to adopt a family-first approach to life, it's virtually impossible to sustain healthy family dynamics apart from some spiritual family connection. So we see religion definitely affects the mountain of family. In education, the mountain of education, the ability to find or to afford a good school is also a major ingredient in a healthy family. If a family's economic situation doesn't allow them to find a reasonable place for their children to attend school, they can be forced to place their children at risk by limited schooling options available to them. Furthermore, the current humanistic and otherwise morally damaging curriculum that is widespread in our public education system adds another risk factor. Everything that you value or wanting to model or teach your family can be torn down by what they are being discipled with through the standard schooling system. So education clearly impacts the mountain of family. Let's look at media. The incessant regurgitation of bad news through most communication outlets greatly affects everybody's morale. Add to that the often negative yet intangible impact of social media, and you have an area of society that has invaded your private household dynamic. So media certainly has an effect on the mountain of family. In economy, the mountain of economy. We've just discussed how economic need can limit a family's options for the education of their children, but it can also limit many other options, such as being able to live in a part of town that's safe. In addition, it takes resources to provide for children's extracurricular activities like music, sports, and the arts. A lack of resources then becomes a primary stressor for families and a leading cause even of divorce with its devastating repercussions on families. So economy greatly shapes the mountain of family. In the mountain of celebration of arts and entertainment, the truth is from about the age of 10 or younger, most of our kids are being ideologically discipled by what we call Hollywood and the rest of the pop culture. Yes, we do need to work on protecting our families from the inside out, but if we can't shift the entertainment culture out of the gutter and into a positive influence, then our task becomes very, very tough. Social media has brought Hollywood right into our homes, and its influence is often very harmful. Sex outside of marriage, perversion, which are both highly promoted through this area of culture, are leading causes of family fractures. When arts and entertainment aren't produced according to God's better way, they seriously erode the mountain of family. Now, the mountain of government. In the last several decades, many government laws have ended up being enormously destructive or harmful to the well-being of the family. For example, although the original idea of welfare was to assist the needy, the incompetent way it was set up ended up rewarding many people who shouldn't have been given that aid, while giving little incentive for people to improve their lives. Moving to another issue, government potentially has the oversight and ability to greatly restrict the flow of pornography to children, but it lacks the resolve to instill the protective measures it must. A failure to protect children from pornography becomes 
some level of destruction to most families. Government assuredly touches the mountain of family. So the point here is to show that no mountain of society exists in a vacuum or is an island unto itself, and especially so in the case of the mountain of family. I theoretically agree that if families could be made healthy, then it would impact all the other mountains, but truly it requires change in the other mountains in order for the mountain of family to thrive the way it was meant to. If you are one who's called to bring solutions to the family, this is a most honorable calling. It's important for you to know that we are only at the beginning stages of the era of Renaissance for families. And the best solutions for the mountain of family will come from those who most understand what our Papa God is like in his relational dealings with us. Those who see him as the great adopter and the great acceptor of us all will be successful in their advances in this area. Many people come to the mountain of family to defend the institution of marriage and for similar priorities. But the priority must be given to heal the rejection that people feel in their hearts. We must show them the acceptance that comes with God's unconditional love. We have to learn how to demonstrate his fatherhood in the world. He is father to us, above every other title we may give him. Those who truly know him as father, as papa, will develop the best solutions for this significant need in society.